Oh, now you can hear me. Yay! Okay. So, I have a couple of announcements. And I do believe that they're going to be good ones. So, yay! We need good news. Amen. Amen. First, let me share with you a special card we got in the mail. And it says, thank you for everything you do. I just wanted to thank the United Methodist Church and all its members for the friendship and love you all had for Barbara. She loved you all and she and you all gave her the strength to fight against the cancer. Many thanks, Klaus, Peter, and Josh. And that was from Barb Peterson's husband and kids. So even if she is physically gone, she's still with us in all of our memories, and we still all love her. Yay! Next announcement, our local Berlin Meadows Healthcare and Rehabilitation is in need of a little joy and warmth for their residents. That being said, we are collecting socks to present a little Christmas joy and warmth. Collections need to be at the church by December 16th. And we know this is short notice, but we just received notice and would like to help. I was up over there last week and they got a whole big box of candy. And uh, the residents up there, yes, could use uh, some socks, some cute little beanies. Um, and it would just be nice if we could help out. So next Sunday, bring a pair of socks. We're looking for men's socks and women's socks. So if you could do that, that would really be wonderful. Um, and we can go up and present it to them because they indeed need some joy and warmth and love as well. We will be having youth today in the form of a Zoom meeting. And that will be at two o'clock. And, ooh, this is the really good news here. Okay, we are excited to announce our 12 days of Christmas. Huzzah, huzzah. Exactly. <laughs> It's going to be a virtual concert. There will be at least one song per day starting December 20th. So I'm going to keep reminding y'all about that next Sunday and the following Sunday, maybe. But um, just keep an eye out for that. And that is our music concerts. Merry Christmas. Oh, I don't think, are we having bells this week? Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, no, 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 no bells. But we are having Bible study at 6 o'clock on Wednesday evening. But we are having Bible study here at 6 o'clock with your masks. Wednesday. What did I say? I am so sorry. Okay. Um. <laughs> And with that, if there are no other announcements, let's pass the peace. Honk horns, blow kisses, wave your hands. <laughs> Thank you.
Good morning. Here a reading from Psalm 85. Lord, you've been kind to your land. You've changed Jacob's circumstances for the better. You've given your people's wrongdoing. You've covered all their sins. You've stopped being furious. You've turned away from your burning anger. You, the God who can save us, restore us. Stop being angry with us. Will you be mad at us forever? Will you prolong your anger from one generation to the next? Won't you bring us back to life again so that your people can rejoice in you? Show us your faithful love, Lord. Give us your salvation. Let us hear what the Lord God says, because he speaks peace to his people and to his faithful ones. Don't let them return to foolish ways. God's salvation is very close to those who honor him, so that his glory can live in our land. Faithful love and truth have met. Righteousness and peace have kissed. Truth springs up from the ground. Righteousness gazes down from heaven. Yes, the Lord gives what is good, and our land yields its produce. Righteousness walks before God, making a road for his steps. We light two candles as a sign of the coming light of Jesus Christ. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet, righteousness and peace will kiss each other. And together we say, Light dawns for the righteous and joy to the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, give you thanks to the God's holy name. Peace to his people 
To his faithful, to those who turn to the Lord in their hearts. Surely salvation is at hand for those who fear the Lord, that glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground, and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before the Lord, and make God's footsteps obey. Join us in the Came Upon the Midnight Clear. circumstances to see family and if you're a kid the biggest thing presents 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 I do think that's what that's all kids think about and I do remember when I was little and I would stare at the Christmas tree and I would see a present or two it took everything I had not to go over and rattle it and see what, what, it, what it was. And I have to admit, I, I would go searching and sneaking and looking in my mom and dad's closet to see if I could find a present that I wanted. And just that anticipation of what am I getting for Christmas? Oh, I hope it's what I asked for. Oh, I remember one year I wanted the big Barbie doll house. Oh, I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait for Christmas. I actually did get it one year. I was so happy. It was the best thing. So this week, this verse is 2 Corinthians Book 9, verse 15. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Well, God's giving us a gift. I wonder what it could be. And I cannot wait to find out. 
So I hope all of you start feeling that anticipation like I am of, what is this gift that God is going to give us? And when do we get to open it? I guess we'll have to wait and be patient and find out. So until then, start thinking about it. What gift could he give us? that rock sounded louder than it actually was. <laughs> At this time, I'd like to go to the Lord in prayer. And I feel this week COVID has really hit our family in ways that we had not seen it before. We have several families in our church who now are struggling with COVID in their own lives. And I pray that we keep um, that we keep our family, our church family, in prayer. Um, Cassandra um, taught with a wonderful man. Uh, his name was Jim McConaughey. And uh, yes, he is Matthew McConaughey's co uh, nephew or cousin, right? Um, but he uh, contracted the virus we found out in Houston. And he has been in the hospital on a ventilator for a month. And he is just a gentle soul, a kind man. And so I ask that you remember him in prayer as well. Um, also, my best friend, she is wonderful and introduced me to Cassandra. She was recently married and found out that her husband uh, has, has been diagnosed with uh, cancer. So I pray for them as they celebrate their first year as husband and wife. Uh, I told her we're going to remember this as something that God triumphed. And um, I just pray that you keep that family in prayer as well. So with that, let us go to God. Dear Lord, we know this is a rough season for many reasons. We pray for our brothers and sisters in our congregation, in our community, in our state, in our country, in our world who suffers from this pandemic. We pray that you guide them, give them hope, give them peace. Let all the medical staff that they come into contact with see glimpses of hope somewhere in their lives. Our heroes on the front Please be with them. Be with our dear ones who we know uh, are living with this dreaded disease. And be with us, Lord. Be with our hearts. Be with the anxiety that we feel, the grief that we feel, the loss that we feel. Speak into it. Speak into that darkness so that we may turn to the light. And in so doing in our light, we may grab hold of you. Be in our souls where we need comforting. Be with our hearts as they need redeeming. Guide us, O oh great one. And be with the prayers that we mention now in our cars, we raise them up to you, Lord. Be with the prayers that we cannot mention out loud for whatever reason. That you answer them, give them voice. So that may, they may know you fully. We ask all these things in your precious and holy name. As we pray, amen. Our scripture today is found, again, from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 1 through 11. 
And before I say so, I need to thank the company um, that someone works for, Smithy works for, who keeps insisting that we have upgrades to uh, the podium that that company, <laughs> Smitty, uh, gave to us. And uh, we, this is much appreciated, so I thank you. Before we read this, uh, before I read this to you, this is a passage that those of us who have been in choirs forever know, like the back of our hand. This is actually the first part, the Messiah is in three parts, and this is the first part. It's called often the Christmas part, the Advent part. And so I want to uh, read this, and those of you who, um, who have been in choirs, you will know the scripture. Part of me as a tenor feels like singing the first few verses uh, because it's the first thing that you hear in the Messiah after the overture. Here are these words. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak compassionately to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her compulsory service has ended, that her penalty has been paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice is crying out, clear the Lord's way in the desert. Make a level highway in the wilderness for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, and every mountain and hill will be flattened. Uneven ground will become level, and rough terrain a valley plain. The Lord's glory will appear, and all humanity will see it together. The Lord's mouth has commanded it. A voice was saying, call out. And another said, what should I call out? All flesh is grass. All its loyalty is like the flowers of the field. The grass dries up and the flower withers when the Lord's breath blows on it. Surely the people are grass. The grass dries up, the flower withers, but our God's word will exist forever. Go up on a high mountain, messenger Zion. Raise your voice and shout, messenger Jerusalem. Raise it, don't be afraid. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. Here is the Lord God coming with strength, with a triumphant arm bringing his reward with him and his payment before him. Like a shepherd, God will tend the flock. He will gather lambs in his arms and lift them onto his lap. He will gently guide the nursing ewes. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. And we say, thanks be to God. Thanks be to God indeed. Let us pray together. Dear God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you. Speak either through me, for me, or in spite of me. For it is in your name we pray. Amen. Boy, it feels a little different here than when I first uh, met you in July. We were worried about whether it would get too hot. Now it's like, can we stay warm enough? I'll take it. The seasons, they change. The grass withers, the flowers wither, but the word of the Lord endures forever. That is the message from good old prophet Isaiah. You know, in the first 39 chapters of this, of this book, 
of Isaiah's. Isaiah warns the people, stop what you're doing. Follow your God. You have no idea what is to come if you don't obey him. And it seemed as if the people turned a deaf ear. And surely enough, the people were defeated. God no longer protected them from invading enemies. The first temple was destroyed and the people were led out, out into another wilderness into Babylon. They were led out of the promised land. I immediately think and say, but God, didn't you promise this to them? And the answer was yes. But what they failed to see is that it wasn't a one size fits all. I give you this, that's it. You don't need to work on our relationship. You don't need to work on any of this. No. For true love is given freely. And true love flows out of what has been given. And the people turned a hard heart. And though love was freely given to them, they did not accept it. They only used it. And they used it until the giver was done, was finished. One may look at this with 21st century eyes and say, praise be to God that we are not held accountable for our sins. That the one who came, God with us, shields us from a faith that we deserve. That's what this is about. A reminder that left to our own devices, we are left to be taken out of the glory of God's kingdom. But praise be to God, we have a savior who mediates for us, who surrenders himself to us out of absolute love. This God that is so powerful that says, if you let me, the mountains in your life, the obstacles, the things that keep you from me will no longer exist for I will step in and I will make those mountains flat and the valleys will be raised so that everything is even. Your life is made whole. I will let you see I will build a bridge and everything will be clear. Trust in me. Trust in me. I think at this point in Isaiah, God says, this is enough. People have suffered enough. They have paid for their sins. And then God began the job of wooing the people back into relationship. And so he builds this bridge of restoration. This bridge to call us back. You know, it's easy to look in our world and see where we need this restoration today. We look and we see pollution and, and how we take care of the earth and go, gosh, we could do so much better. We need grace. 
We look and see how we treat the marginalized of our society and say, what right do we have to push our brothers and sisters to the side when we all fall short of the glory of God? With this mountain and hill made low and the valleys raised, we all stand on level playing field. We all stand on the bridge that God has built. And we say, hallelujah. I'm not where I was, but I'm not where I will be. I am here now, standing in front of the magnificence of our God. I don't have to look too far in this land we live in to catch the beauty of God's mighty acts. You can't help but realize when you look over this area and see who made that handy work. Who made this so that we may enjoy the land? That we may come to worship the one who has given us all of this. In the chaos of today, we need this promise from Isaiah. That God come and is with us. This gives us hope because we know that Jesus comes and forgives our sins and wipes the slate clean so that we may go forward with hope. You know, Isaiah has these incredible dreams, these God-given dreams that life will be better that we will not stay where we are in this land of exile, that we will return back, but it will be better because we'll appreciate it more. We just have to hold on to our hope. We must dream. And you know, the dream doesn't really need to be that big. Because when you dream, you have hope. You have something to look forward to. When we had rotten days in the hospital, when months, when days turned into weeks and weeks turned into months and we were stuck in the hospital, I looked at Cassandra at one point and said, you know what? This is not going to be our normal. Next year, we're going to look back at this year and go, Ooh, wasn't it a cruddy year? But hallelujah, we made it through. I think right now in the time we're in right now, folks, we need that kind of dream more than ever. We need the kind of hope to say we will not be here forever for next year we will be in this in this building together sharing laughter and joy and then remin reminiscing with one another about man what a year 2020 was but it's our hope now that gets us to there and that's what Isaiah wants us to do for a dream lives deep in your soul. It lights the furnace and motivates you to keep moving, to keep going forward. So I want to leave you with this thought about dreams. And I couldn't do it without bringing up the speech of Martin Luther King in 1963, that March on Washington. 
As he was beginning this speech, before in preparation had talked to the gospel singer Mahalia Jackson. And he was like, Mahalia, I'm just not sure I can finish the rest of this. I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to deliver this whole, this whole idea. And Mahalia said, tell him, preach it. They don't realize that what they're about to do they may have thought they had come to the Was to march on Washington, but what they really didn't know is that they're actually about to go to church. And so Martin Luther King starts his speech, and then he gets to the point where it's going to be that part about a dream. And he's like, I'm just not sure. I just don't know. And Mahalia Jackson, who was there, looked at him and said, let it go, preacher. Let it go, Martin. Let it go. And then he delivered that I have a dream. And it became a rallying cry for the civil rights movement. It's a reminder that like Isaiah, we have dreams that move us forward in a world that likes to stifle those dreams. Hold fast to your dreams. Hold fast to your faith. The faith that you know that God raises your valleys up to meet the mountains that are made low and to build a bridge to God. And hold fast to know that at the center of our Christmas, we claim what Isaiah says. God is with us. Hold it. Cherish it. Believe in it. And hope on it. For it is in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we offer honor and glory and praise to you, Almighty Father. Amen. If you will join me in the prayer of confession, in your bulletin. Righteous God, you have crowned Jesus Christ as Lord of all. We confess that we have bowed before him and are slow to acknowledge his rule. We give allegiance to the powers of this world and fail to be governed by justice and love. In your mercy, forgive us. Raise us to acclaim him as ruler of all, that we may be loyal ambassadors obeying the commands of our Lord Jesus Christ. If the ushers will come forward, please. Hear the good news. Hear the pardon. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God loves toward us. In the name of Jesus the Christ, you are forgiven. In, In the, the name, name of Jesus the Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And now if the ushers will come forward. Yep. Heavenly Father, we are here today to worship you. We adore you. We love you. We know you are with us. Strengthen us. Help us through this time. For we know you are always with us. And please accept these our gifts in your son's holy name. Amen.
so that we may live. The one who takes us across the sea, who makes dry ground so that we may walk, who makes the rough places plain, and raises the valley, 
this one does all of this work in our hearts. We give thanks to this one as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna indeed in the highest. We lift your name as we remember the countless deeds freely lavished upon us. We remember that last night of Passover, that Seder, that meal that you celebrated with those closest to you. That night when you took the bread and you raised it to heaven, you offered a prayer in this fashion. Shema Yisrael, Baruch Atah Adonai Elechenu Molech Cholem. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, creator of the universe, is one. You took that bread after giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to your disciples and said, Take, eat, all of you. This is my body which is broken for you to bring you wholeness, to set you free. Do this in love for me. And on that same night when they had finished the meal, he took the cup, offered a prayer in similar fashion to God, and said, take and drink of this all of you. Not just some of you, not just those that I like, but all of you. For this is my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you do in memory of me. And so, we celebrate this incredible life-giving sacrament that compels us into relationship with our Creator, which takes this many pieces and turns it into one loaf one community, one body of believers, as we say, one catholica, universal body. And we take it as we proclaim the mystery of our faith, that Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Pour out your mighty mightiness on these, these vessels that allow us to experience you fully, holy, in ways that we never had before. Let us feel the presence of your power, of your spirit, and see it alive every day. For it is in your name. We will pray for our church, and we will pray for the community of churches around the world. That people who step into their facilities may be confronted with overwhelming grace. They may understand your love. It's in your name we pray, amen. And now, as a community of believers, let us pray the prayer that our God taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The banquet is all prepared. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Let us, as a body of believers, feast on the bread and wine right now. If it becomes too much or unbearable, remember we are live streaming or, or at least putting the service online. So you will be able to stay with our community if that becomes an issue. But it is so good to see your faces and to hear your voices every morning. You're a very important part of our day how great it is when we, the people of God, despite anything, may come together, even if it is a car's length away. May you know peace this, this week. May you experience where the mountains are made low and the hills are raised up to represent an even plain in your own life. May you realize that you stand on the bridge between the divine and life. May we give thanks by our living and our loving this week so that hearts may be transformed and we may truly worship you. For it is in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we offer our praises and thanksgivings. Amen. Amen.